Ah, brilliant. So let me get you set up. I don't know if I'm there. Um, no, you need to. Um... My video. Yep. All right. There you are. Before we start, let me just confirm with the um, got the audience here if they can hear us both. Can you hear us both? Hundred percent. Excellent. And then we get to that. Cool. So, uh, Jamie to Jamie, knowing me, knowing you. <laughs> Is that Dave's? No, it is the blood of my neighbor's children. <laughs> um, okay, listen, well, since your last video, and um, we've had quite a few, well, I say a couple of thousand have joined since you've, um, since they, uh, well, since we did the first interview with you. So for those that don't know um, who you are and what you're doing and, um, and why you're on their screens right now, do you want to sort of give them a little background about you and, and what you're doing with Vulcanverse? Uh, well, I am the Dark Lord, also known as Jamie Thompson, just like you. And I started life writing game books way back in the 80s for, um, well, I used to work at Games Workshop. Some of you guys will know what that is, all the Warhammer stuff. And went on that to do a few fighting fantasy game books and then about 25, 30 game books. And they were very successful in those days. But uh, when computers came along, game books are kind of like computer games without computers uh, that, that sort of all that died off game books and so i got into computer games as it happened for many years so i bought for idos and have my own games company and then these days there's a kind of retro resurgence of game books people love the ideas of it and then the inferior jamie in every way except youth who was younger than i barely. still yeah barely, uh, started this whole vulcanverse thing with um all that sort of NFT Bitcoin stuff, which I don't really quite understand. I'm sure all you guys do. Um, and Jamie was interested in what the law of his world would be like. So he got me in to do all the Greek myth, Greco Romano myth stuff. So I do all the backstories of the Vulcanites and the names of the cards in the card game and all that kind of thing. And he's also keen to, and it's a really good idea for us to do that in the Vulcanverse both as a marketing exercise and also to just to get more product out there, I suppose. But really, it's about getting as many different versions of games, and apps, or whatever it might be, set in the Vulcanverse. So that might include uh, the card game and um, the auto battler and um, also game books, because mm -hmm. we can. And we have access to my writing partner Dave Morris too who, and between us we're some of the um, the most experienced game book writers in the world so why not do game book versions of the Vulcanverse and that way we can also create storylines and uh, backstories take stuff from the Vul existing Vulcanverse lore put them in the books and then create new stuff for the books that we can then feed back in to the Vulcanverse and hopefully um, it's looking good at the moment, but we'll also have French, German, Spanish, maybe Spanish, if we end up, but definitely Italian and um, Canadian stroke American versions of the game books, which is another way of getting the word, the Vulcanverse word out, but also to create content for us to use yeah. generally. It's, fun, it's funny because I, I don't think a lot of people, well, maybe the most do, they don't realize that all these creatures actually start with you. I mean, we sort of, we give you a, a quadrant and then you come up with sort of the creature, then Jimmy makes yes. it, then you name it, and then we level it, and then we see it in game. It's just this process that sort of comes from your head straight into the art. Well, yes and no. Some of it has come the other way. So uh, uh, sometimes Jimmy is, will do a, something, a picture of something, and I'll have to fit it into, give it a Greek angle. And there's also all the Greek stuff, So, but we're making it our own. So it's not quite so much as over the years i've created all sorts of weird strange creatures from our own um universes that we create to set game books into but this inspiration being greek so we're taking things like harpies or minotaurs and we give them a vulcan verse twist and i'm um, having a lot of fun actually 
it's sort of interesting because for so many years when I started, it was all Lord of the Rings, sub Lord of the Rings influence stuff. And that's still true of Warcraft and most, most modern things, games. For 25, 30 years, it was goblins and orcs. But when I started in, in 1970, whatever it was, when I was a kid reading, there was, it was all Greek myth or Egyptian or, or Thor and um, stuff like that. So it's kind of good to come full circus, circle and take one's inspiration from, uh, you know, there are no oh, words. Yeah. yeah, from the old Greek mythology. mythology. And then when, once, but hold on, once reading all of that, it's so rich that it's, you know, one forgets how rich and powerful Greek mythology is story-wise. And so, so we're just reworking loads of Greek myth and, and presenting them in new ways. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so David, I'm... We've given you like a blank Greco-Roman slate, basically, haven't we? Yeah, and yeah. So you can tap into. I mean, the more you're writing, the more everyone else is realizing how big, how big and deep all the mythology is. So really, yeah. there's sort of no no limit of how how far you can go with it. No, not really. No, there's so much Greek mythology, and we're adding to it and taking it and reworking it in new ways. Um, uh, um Dave and I have written a lot of books together, and he's. Uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to getting these published. It's taken months. I mean, one of the headaches for us has been our old brains. Whilst we're better at writing and we understand what we're writing more, we, there's because the, they're open world books, which I'll talk about in a minute. They're very complex, and it's a bit harder for us to hold all the logic in our heads like we used to. So it's um, but on the other hand, we think these are going to be the best game books we've ever written because we've learned also so much about storytelling and narrative, even though it's you know, different structure uh, well, so talk about that structure a little bit i mean what is choose your own adventure so all the people here may not know what choose your own okay adventure. so hopefully people will have heard of fighting fantasy which was really big in the 80s and that was started by ian livingston and steve jackson who were the guys who um started games workshop um and they started with a one shop in um hammersmith i think it was and they had they lived in the back of a van because they couldn't afford the rent for a house. They could only afford the rent for a shop. And now there are like 800 shops all over the world and it's market cap is a billion or something. I don't know. Huge. But anyway, so they, they created these fighting fantasy games, which is like choose your own adventure, Dungeons and Dragons role playing game. So you would have say 400 paragraphs for some reason was the standard in those days. And you would play a game and read a story. And the story would say things like, uh, apologies for those who've played game books, but they might say things like, you enter the dark cavern in the corner, the hideous goblin king, called Jamie Thompson, obviously the young one, not the older one, <laughs> um, threatens you with death or whatever. If you've got the sort of goblin king slaying, turn to paragraph 54. If you, if you want to talk your way out of the situation, turn to paragraph 105. And if you fight the goblin king, in this case, you would roll dice and there would be a rule system so it's kind of like solo role playing done with a linear narrative. Um, normally, most game when we did a series of Way of the Tiger, which is ninjas in Middle Earth sort of thing, and that is was that traditional structure. But most of these sort of linear narratives have at least three different routes that you would read, follow on, and become locked into. So it might be that you're traveling to the Mount Doom, let's say, in Lord of the Rings. You can either take the route via the Misty Mountains, you can take a ship around the coastline, or you can um, go down into Gondor and go directly across, say, as an example. Uh, and that would be the three different routes we might do if Lord of the Rings was going to be a game book. And they would meet at nodes, and then they would, the story would come out of those nodes. Um, and we, that's the traditional way of doing it. And then Dave and I turned all that on our heads and invented the first open world game books so these became more like there wasn't a single plot line these were explore your world like an mmo for one person in um a book form so that meant that paragraphs were no longer pieces of storytelling some of them were but they were also geographical locations in a world so a, a paragraph 100 might be a city and it would have little boxes and it would pick the box every time you went to that paragraph went back to it because you'd be follow you'd be traveling on a map of course in the modern age you have all of these apps where you just you know put a press a finger on where you want to travel take your character to 
or you have to use, um, you know, anyone who's played any um, Assassin's Creed or any games that are fast travel points, it's all very easy. But in books, it's a bit different. Um, and there's a, the, um, so that means, so a tick box means you're recording how many times you visit a place. And then we also have things called code words, which are like logic flags and computer games, which then means the world can change according to what you choose and do, how you make choices in the game book. And so you go up levels, you have character progression, you have multiple storylines, many of them all over the place, and you're in control of where you want to go via a map. And there isn't like, you must travel from A, from Hobbiton to Mount Doom and put the ring in. That would just be one of many quests. And that sort of changed, so there'd be, that changed the way game books could be done. And uh, there've been quite a lot of open world game books series since then. And the last five or five, maybe 10 years has been a sort of resurgence of game books. Some of that is people discovering game books for the first time. Others are guys who are now married with kids and loved the game books when they were 12 and buy them for, nostalgic reasons to share with their children but it provides you know it's not really a way that you can compete with a computer game but you can complement it complement with an e not an i because when you're reading a, a game book what you imagine what that goblin king looks like is your goblin king so every reader has their own version of the thing it's not whatever the art department has decided to give you in the in the company that made that computer game and that gives it a certain different way of looking at things. And also you get some fun. You get, you know, it's more storytelling, really. It's much more about storytelling than it is so yeah. much but about you do have still, magic sword. You still sort of choose it. And, and, that's, and that's the same technique you're taking with the Vulcanverse game books, is it? The sort of choose. Yes, yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So the Fable Lands books was a great big map of a vast world. This is actually a map of the fabled lands. Unfortunately, it's the French version, so I don't have a full color paper English one. So well, the point about that is like an area over here, for instance, would be book one in the series. This is book seven. The C in the middle was book three. So each book had a, a location, an area of the world. So when you were in book one and you wanted to travel across the sea, you would have to go via book three. And that's what we've done with the Vulcanverse because it's a very similar structure. So oh. at the moment I'm writing, um, journey, no, I'm writing the houses of the dead, which is all, all the Hades book one will be, well, not, not really numbered that the first one will be Hades. Dave is doing, um, the hammer of the sun. I think we're going to call it, which is the desert of, of notice the deserts and there are crossovers. So you have adventures in Hades that will take you to adventures in the desert where you can then find and pick up equipment or uh, find information that you have to come back to book the first book to finish. So the idea is there will be five books in the end, all cross linked with adventures going back and forth. So after I finish Hades, which is not far off being done, you um, I'll be doing Arcadia, Gardens of Arcadia. And uh, Dave will move on to the pillars of the sky. I think we're calling Hades book, um, the houses of the dead. The Arcadia book will probably be the wild woods. The desert book will be the hammer of the sun and the pillars of the sky will be the mountain book. And then the right. final one is probably going to be the workshop of the gods, which will be set in Vulcan city. Okay, so once the first book comes out, Hades, for example, will they need the other books in order to sort of progress through? Yeah, I mean, because it's an open world, there isn't a sense that you start the book and finish it. Hmm. It's lots of adventures that uh, you have in any order that you want to do them. So ultimately, it's basically five books in one that you have will be a of big open world that you can go back and forth through. Uh, but unlike the Fable Lands open world books, which don't have an ending, these will finally have an ending in book five. So the premise is that uh, is like in, in the Vulcan verses that the god Vulcan or um, Hephaestus, we usually use the Greek stuff, but because Hephaestus is too clumsy a word, we call him Vulcan. 
Also, Vulcan verse sounds much better than Hephaestus verse. Mm. You, you know, that was an April Fool's joke. We, we announced uh, the change of Vulcan verse to Hephaestus's world. You know? Hephaestus's world. Yeah, well, it wasn't bad, but it doesn't quite have the easy ring. Yeah, so um, in, in that, Vulcan has uh, created this new Olympus as digital Olympus because he's the tech god. And all the rest of the gods of Olympus are asleep. And during this time, I won't say too much, but it's the Titans who are coming up. And there's also mankind. So there are three factions, the men led by Daedalus, the inventor, who's in, and they're all ambiguously got their good bits and bad bits, the Titans and the Olympian gods. And in the end, you have to decide which one, which one you'll back. At but the it, end or at the beginning, you choose? At the end, you'll choose who, who, who will win the battle for the new Olympus. Oh, wow. Which faction? So you finally, yeah, choose your a faction, either so, a kind of humanist mankind thing, or and then that leads to other results. Was, ah, so gonna, you, you, you're going to choose the Titan monster path or the Olympian human path at the end, or the human path. Well, there'll be three. So you could be you could be humans, Olympians, or um, Titans. Mm. Um, without giving too much away then, so when someone opens this book for the first time, the Hades one, um, what will they well, need to get started? Who do they choose? And, and do they need dice, well, for the, example? Yeah, you need dice and a pen and paper and recommended you, you will probably provide character sheets you can download from the website and you print them off or fill it in online as you play, rather than, because there's a lot of rubbing out and crossing out, adding code words and then removing code words, depending on what you do and what happens. Um, but actually, it doesn't matter which book you start in. Uh, mm. Probably does, probably probably not book five to start in, but well, actually, we have to make it possible to do that. So um, you can get any book and start adventuring, and then um, you know, ideally you get all five books and you can play all the way through. But you, So you can start where you feel comfortable starting. Mm. Um, I mean, literally, the, literally from the middle of the book, you can just open up a paragraph and... Oh, no, no. If you take the first book, you start at paragraph one. Right. And that was to, you create your character. Uh, oh, and if you. Human. Yes, as a humans um, selected by the gods, or, you, or is it the gods? We'll see, to um, uh, save the Vulcan verse. Mm. And um, uh, if you've already got a character, then you can. Um, so. Well, the first time you've ever started playing, you started paragraph one of any of the books, and that's a character creation mini game. And you'll let and that, the choices you make there determine whether you're very strong or so. There'll be four basic attributes based on Apollo, Ares, um, Artemis, and uh, another one beginning with A. Who have I missed? Apollo? Athena. Athena. No, we got Apollo. So, and there, there it's basically charm, ingenuity, um, strength, and grace, which correspond to. You know, charm is talking your way out of things, which is kind of like Apollo, uh, sort of roguery, trickery, strength, combat, or just strength. Char um, grace is dexterity, uh, and um, ingenuity is sort of cunning and invention, which is uh, Athena, and Ares is strength that corresponds. Um, and those choices that you make to create a character at the beginning determine what bonuses and penalties you may get in as your starting character and then you name them and you decide whether you're male or female and off you go yeah i guess for those of the newer generation oh. who haven't played these kind of games this probably does sound a little bit complicated until you've actually tried it yourself because i mean I remember ah, it is where... extremely complicated however all of the complexity is hidden from the reader you're constantly told exactly what to do so it will say things like tick this box tick, write this code word down and as long as you just follow the instructions in the text, so a beginning of a paragraph might say, if you have the code word, and so they're always beginning with the same letter. Um, so uh, uh, nemesis, if you have the code word nemesis ticked, turn to a paragraph number. And then that number will say, you once, you've already defeated the Minotaur in battle. This time um, the labyrinth is empty or something else happens. So you needn't worry as you follow the instructions. It's, it's all pretty straightforward. There's nothing you do. You just write, write your possessions on your character sheet, tick a box here, tick a code word there, check a title. And, and then once you've created... You know, 
You obviously can't cheat yourself. I mean, it, the whole idea is well, you, you can cheat. easily cheat in a game. Book. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you turn to a paragraph and you die, well, we kind of made it a lot easier. That it's quite hard to die in, in the, permanently. And in the old game book days, it was, it was very rogue um, like. So you would, if you died, that was it. You had to cross all your character sheet notes off and all your possessions to start all over again. But this, we have a sort of divine intervention resurrection system. So you can still get utterly destroyed and wiped out, which would be frustrating, but mostly it's. It's, it's a little bit easier and so once you've got your character then when you there's that everything else is governed by the text and where you get to in a in a um like you read for an hour and play the game a bit you have to record you know you save the game by writing down what paragraph number you're at and once mm -hmm. you've got your character you, you you never that will lead you into the next book so when, when it says if you want to uh travel to hades you go to the gate of um i don't know what the gate to call the Anyway, one of the entrances to Hades, and that will tell you to travel to a paragraph number in another book. Hmm. Um, but we've got uh, quite a few questions coming in, Jay. And, um, yeah, sure. Uh, they've, they've been asking loads. I forgot that, that, that there were some questions I was supposed to ask you. Um, yeah. uh, question Will Lysus, King of Arcadia, father of Alpha, be a part of the first book or second book? It's very specific. Ah, well, the thing is about, you mean, like, like on the, um, yes, the, the father of the woods, he'll be in uh, the Wildwoods, which is Arcadia. That's the next book I, I, I'll be writing. I've already set up some quest lines in Hades that involve him. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, technically it's, we don't, I suppose it will be book two or book three, but we don't really want to number them because in the Fable Lands books, they were numbered one to six and they, re they actually also reflected the, the difficulty level. So um, it was very hard for first level characters in book one of Fable Lands to go to book six. Mm. Um, they have to go up ranks and levels, but it's not, it's a bit more evenly distributed in, uh, in the Vulcanverse or the Vulcan verses, as we'll call them. So yes, yeah, so it's not really book two, but yes, it's, he's in, he's in the Wildwoods. Okay, so in, in the, the deep book two, in the Arcadia book, which is good because Tristan is an Arcadia man. Um, are these books becoming interactive at all, um, or are they just traditional books? I mean, how do they, do they interact with the Vulcan verse in any way? Uh, they're going to be more open world and traditional in that sense. Uh, I, we have talked about the possibility of putting certain things, certain parts of the game book work, uh, of the game book, may only be opened by going to places in the Vulcan verse in the real world, in the digital world. Uh, so maybe we can put some things some codes that a game book enabled as we called it some things you discover in the vulcan verse with your vulcanites you send them out to get stuff or you find yourself that might be code words that only that open up sections in the game books that you can only get to via if you pick some stuff up in the yeah, or we can do it inversely, where we read the book and then we can sort of take, you know, if they do something in your book, we can make it happen in, in Vulcanverse, of course. So that might um, be easier. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to ask you your favorite quadrant because it's obviously Hades. Um, uh, of course. <laughs> can we convince you to do voice acting for Vulcanverse NPC characters? Well, I have done a few before. I did do some in a Warrior Kings game, and uh, they got me. I nearly got in the final version of fable 2 i think but I, I was actually in there only as a placeholder but yes i'd quite happily do it yeah i did okay. yeah Super. as long as it's some sort of got to do something evil yeah oh, well, 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 well blubber jaw obviously or or, or trap jaw one of the demonists one of the demons of course not blubber jaw that was really insulting you jay um, well i well not really yeah i do yeah, look I, like blubber jaw it's true <laughs> no, any demon any demon um, do, does the Dark Lord own land? Do you own land? I do have some land in the mountains. Oh, I need to get I'm not quite sure where. Already, don't I? Um, yes. And, uh, I, think, yes. I, think I think I might have some in Arcadia, but not much. Um, Until my undead hordes conquer the Vulcanverse and then all land will be mine. <laughs> um, how uh, do you come up with ideas during the day uh, like random thoughts for the law or, or how, how do they come up well so a writing mm, so often i'll think i'll write in the morning i'll do something else in the afternoon and i'll think about it 
when I'm writing the next day at night usually and then sleep on it and then you usually wake up with a sense of what you want to do but but actually when you're writing a game book it's always in the back of your mind the next the ideas that you have to have game books are complicated because they're not just writing plot narrative plot pieces you've also got to think about because with the open world things you might write a hundred quests each one which might be enough to for someone to write a novel about so you're constantly having to think of new ways you can't always just go now fight this monster and roll two dice you've mm -hmm. got to think of clever puzzles and uh, tricky solutions and storytelling devices mm -hmm. so it's uh, you have to think about it all the time uh, uh, um, i've been playing a lot of assassin's creed odyssey so mm -hmm. when um when i'm finished for a, a certain amount of work i'll play that and to remain in the greek yes. the greek mythology because that's a cracking game are you um yeah. are you sick at the moment am i sick yeah your voice you've got you've got a sore throat ah i'm mentally ill of course <laughs> <coughs> so looking no, actually, yourself, right? yeah no i think it, no i was you know i've become saner in lockdown it's probably yeah. because um <clears throat> i don't don't talk much these days well, that's it for the creatives. I think this is just like an amazing time to be stuck at home and actually do something. If not, you're kind of sort of, at least you've got something to write for us and, and stay busy. Oh, I've asked, okay, this question's come up four times from Sergio now. Anything you can tell us about the philosophers um, that you've Oh, chosen? I've had, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with the little philosophers picnic in Hades. So you, you, um, you turn up, you find these shades, because a lot of like shades of ghosts of the living. And the great thing about the Vulcan verse is you can pick and choose any from any time in Greek mythology uh, because it's sort of, it's like a made up version of the made up version of something. So, mm. uh, yeah, so I, I didn't want to pick two, two famous uh, philosophers. So Plato and Socrates, for instance, get mentioned, but I have a quite some amusing philosophical sophistry going on as you, they ask you, but yeah, well, I don't know. I want to leave that until yeah. people read it, but it was quite funny. Because I remember telling you we, we thought about the philosopher program, and instead of you coming back with you know Socrates, Plato, whatever, you came back with like four names I've never heard of, which actually works far much better than sort of shoving in the sort of common. Yes, you know? well, there was Aspasia is um, she actually appears in uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I didn't realise until I started playing. But she's <clears throat> kind of the wife of Pericles, and she was like a she would hold these philosophers' symposiums, and she was a philosopher philosopher s of such a thing is and so i just picked various ones that had the right angle of, uh, uh, and belief so cleanthes is one of the early stoics uh, xenophanes is like a very early philosopher upon which a whole bunch of other stuff is rests upon and protagoras is the sophist so you get a lot of annoying logic from him mm. and yeah i thought it was important not to use the obvious ones because it Know, yeah, it, know, it gives it a better twist. Yeah, everyone can come on. Mm. Okay, um, I'll ask you one more question then. And um, but before I do, I, I want to say that um, you're one of the uh, one of the most sought after staff members in Vulcanverse. People generally want to sort of hear from you, talk to you, find out what you're doing. So um, I must say you've got a bit of a fan base here. So don't be don't oh, be shy good. to come in here um, whenever you want. Um, okay, what, uh, uh, two little questions to finish with. First of all, what's the book you've written so far you're most proud of? We'll start with that one. Well, I suppose the Dark Lord series, the ones I'm most ah, proud of. Yes, but, of yeah. course, the Dark Lord. You but if you mean a game, a game book, it, probably, it could be th this one that I'm doing at the moment, actually. Okay. But it, if it's not, it's probably the, the Fable Lands. Yeah. Well, Where the Tiger 2, they were great fun. Where the Tiger Ninja. 2. I remember playing. But mm. well, I suppose the Dark Lord novels would be the thing, because their yeah. novels were a step up from game books and they won prizes. And... Yeah, for those who don't know, Dark Lord was called Dirk Lloyd, which was like a boy who was sort of uh, inhabited by the Dark Lord. Uh, no, he was the Dark Lord. Well, no, Lord, it's, it's more like yeah. imagine Sauron, an archetypal Dark Lord, is defeated by an archetypal Saruman, uh, no, uh, Gandalf, and his punishment is to be exiled to modern day Earth. And worse than that, is cursed into the body of a 13 year old boy. Then the police find this boy lying there and they say, What's your name, boy? And he goes, Boy, I am the Dark Lord. But it comes <laughs> out, but it comes out, Boy, I'm the Dirk Lloyd. And they, he's got a squeaky boy's voice and they think he's called Dirk Lloyd. And it's and basically. He's into school, isn't 
Yeah, yeah, and he tries to take over the school and uh, you know overthrow Master and conquer the Earth and all that sort of stuff. It's thirteen. And I do yeah. believe that won the Roald Dahl comedy. Roald Dahl Funny Prize in twenty twelve. Yeah. yeah, there's four books in the ser series so far. Super. All right, then, Jay. Um, and are the novels? Are you still going to be writing novels after the game books for Vulcanverse? We'll leave it there. Well, an interesting point. Yeah, we'll have to see how that goes, but that's possible. Yeah, I've got a plot outline for that already. Um, mm. it, it could be. Yeah. Anything you'd like to say to your loving community and the uh, superior Jamie? <clears throat> well, I would encourage the community eventually to rebel against Jamie, overthrow him and install me as CEO of the Vulcanverse. I'll be a much better ruler. Uh, uh, what else seditious can I suggest? That sort of thing. Um. <laughs> Oh, there's so, so many. I, 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 can, I can talk to you forever. Listen, we're going to have to do this again because there are so many questions. No, I think we could do yeah. a couple more questions if you want. Uh, okay, well, a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, where was it? Oh, have you got any other addictions apart from writing? Uh, and the blood of children. And that, of course, yeah. And yeah. Uh, oh, computer games. Obsessive computer game player. And what are you playing right now? Please don't say Assassin's Creed. Well, I've finished Odyssey, so at the moment I'm playing a strange Russian game called Desolate, which mm. uses the Unreal Engine with this old technology, but you kind of wander around an island where some sort of apocalypse has occurred and there are mutants and people are mad and it's kind of first person. It's kind of a bit clunky and weird, but it's got a certain atmospheric feel to it which is quite good. So yeah. I'm sticking with it for the moment. I wouldn't know. I mean, I'm not even a gamer, and here I am. So ironically, you probably would be a better CEO than I would be here. Um, I, don't, okay. I think I'd be too lazy. But... Here's a question which I know the answer to. Do you play D and, uh, Dungeons and Dragons? Um, well, I have played Dungeons and Dragons, but I do do a lot of live role play, not live action role playing. I'm too old for that. Actually, I'm not, but I don't. But yeah, I do a lot of role playing. Yeah, but not D and D. You used to. You used to up in the attic, didn't you? You know. Uh, well, that was actually wargaming in the attic uh, with uh, Napoleonic Napoleonic wargaming. No, no, I don't. Did never played Warhammer. It was Napoleonic's. But uh, yeah, done a lot of sort of RPG stuff. But it tends to be either GURPS or our own system or um, something called the Apocalypse. Did I say the Apocalypse system? I think so. Or a thing called Empire the Petal Throne, which is an old, which we Dave's written his own system for. Uh, but hang on, you say you don't play Warhammer, but you were the editor for White Dwarf. Now, isn't when White I was Dwarf... the editor, it was the fantasy and science fiction games magazine. So we covered RuneQuest, D and D, all sorts of different games, board games, mm. uh, role playing mm. games. It only became obsessively uh, the Warhammer catalog when Games Workshop went through a lot of changes and uh yeah. they all you know and i'd left before then uh not um, even sure if warhammer was around when i was as she was yeah it was just it was because it was in, in brighton well i don't know that was actually yeah or, yeah a little yeah. shop down there um yeah. okay uh what's your favorite tipple <laughs> well that's an interesting one i suppose i remember for my 60th birthday dave and a bunch of my friends got together and they bought me a 270 pound bottle of whiskey and uh six pound a sip it was and it, i have to say it was really good six uh, pound a sip well basically yeah it's 270 quid for a bottle of whiskey it was bloody good actually it was really good whiskey and it was called spring bank so mm -hmm. i do like whiskey but then i also like the black kraken spiced rum of course you have to get the right with a bit of yeah. Coca Cola and gin, of course, and yeah, I think, yeah. I've had to give up uh, beer. It, it, it's very strange. Sorry, I just forget all that. My favourite tipple is, of course, the blood of children. <laughs> 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 um, I think we're, we're running to the. We've got, we've got questions of is the universe safe and why is my house shaking is where we've got to now so <laughs> um i think i, I think you've, you've done great and are they going to bump into you in the game are you going to play the game because you've written it all you know it's pretty much down to you well, i hadn't thought, thought about that i suppose i ought to really yeah 
Of course you should. Well, I'm wearing an alpha right now. I'm testing. You can join the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Well, once I've done the game books, yeah, yeah, I should get us get Jimmy's to do a special Jamie avatar creature, and that'll I'll have my own avatar look yes. a bit like Blubber Jaw. <laughs> oh, someone just said, can you give him his own avatar? Yeah, yeah, it's just like a large, round, blubbery demon. <laughs> and then you can voice over your own character. You can be near yes. the, uh, the Balkan City Gate asking riddles and sort of you know, yeah, before they come in. <laughs> The fat uh, speaks to me. Good, good. All right, all right. So maybe we can do this again in um, a couple of weeks or something and see where you're at. Because you, yeah. you, timeline, you think, you, you, because I know you sent me a first draft, so you're wrapping up Hades at the moment. Yes, up then, to uh, about 60,000 words now. Dave has gone bonkers and written something like 1,200 paragraphs. It's going to be a huge fact. Yeah, he's gone mad on it, hasn't he? I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be about 800, 850, which is still more than a usual Fabled Lands books, which used to be 750 powers or so. So but he's... He's, um, uh, it's, it's got to be proof, though, hasn't it, before we even... Oh, yeah, yeah, we've got to um, we've got to proof it, check it all, have it uh, logic tested and flow charted to make sure it all works, and then we've got to lay it out yeah. and, and get some illustrations done, covers. So it'll be a while yeah. before it's available. But a few months because the advantage is as we're publishing it ourselves we it means we do, we do it print on demand so you, you order it from amazon say or or probably the vulcanverse shop if we can set that up maybe and then uh that gets forwarded to the company that you've uploaded the files to they print it post it to whoever mm -hmm. orders it so it's not like we have a traditional publishing thing of ten thousand copies in a warehouse somewhere just sitting around and what countries mm -hmm. are confirmed again it was france and italy. well there'll be france germany well not confirmed they could still you know haven't signed a contract yet but hopefully they've said they're yeah. interested they, know, they know who you are they know who you yeah are. yeah they, they've, they've done all our fable lands and where the tiger and not where the tiger fable lands and blood sword so uh, which are dave's series so yeah so it would be fairly certain it'll be french german italian maybe hmm. spanish and there'll be a sort of american version and maybe a canadian Canada, and, and can, yeah i heard there's a canadian publisher talking to you lately, yeah which, yeah um, right mm. all right then jay much love to you and um look after thank you yourself. wormling yes <laughs> on the side of the world jamie to jamie how very bizarre how very surreal this is the two jamie thompsons <laughs> well a the jamie thompson and a jamie thompson <laughs> All right, everyone saying thank you to you and they're sending lots of lovely comments. So um, we'll sign off now and I'll put it on YouTube okay. later if you want to have a watch of it. All right, cool. All right, then. Bye bye, bye, -bye vile bye. human scum. See you all next time. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Subscribe to the channel.